Thanks, Chair. Um, yes, before we even consider our maritime future, we should perhaps look at our maritime past and our maritime present also. Ireland is located off the northwestern coasts of Europe. You can just see it there on the Google map. Contrary to popular belief, it is an island, not just a large farm. In fact, thousands of years ago, the Celts came here, and they were a farming people. They were inward looking. They turned their backs on the sea. They did a very good job. They cultivated the land. Ireland became the Emerald Isle. We became well known for our beautiful produce, beef, milk, butter, cheese, and so on. But what did we contribute to the maritime sphere? Looking at the landmass of Ireland, it's 69,000, approximately 69,000 square kilometers. But more significantly, we have one of the largest coastlines or longest coastlines in Europe. We have a coastline of about 3,500 nautical miles. So the Celts came, they did a pretty good job, and they nurtured and cultivated the Emerald Isle. But they were inward looking, as I've just said, and only a small minority of people actually looked towards the sea and saw the sea not as a barrier, not as a border, but as an opportunity. Let's go right back to the days of St. Brendan the Navigator, around about the year 600. St. Brendan the Navigator is supposed to have sailed from the Kerry coast across the Atlantic to a very large island, which we probably call North America today. And he was seeking spiritual renewal and wrote all about it. In fact, uh, they said they even uh, stopped halfway across to, uh, and because they encountered an island, um, so they wanted a rest, and when they lit a fire on the island, the island swam away. It was a whale. But yes, um, th 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 he has written about that in, in one of the very few documents we have about our maritime heritage. Over the years, Ireland was invaded by the Vikings, by the Normans, and by others. We never really invaded any other countries, although we did have some warriors ourselves, but they didn't go very far away. One warrior is Granuela, Grace O'Malley, the pirate queen. She was very active in protecting her territory off the coast of Connemara. And she had a fleet of vessels and arguably could be said to be Ireland's first female ship owner. She had a fleet of vessels which protected her area. She built up such a reputation that she was actually invited to the court of Queen Elizabeth I, where they conversed in Latin. So, so famous was she that the commissioners of Irish Lights even named their vessel after her. It's a pity Granuela's era didn't last a little bit longer than it did, because soon after her era passed and she passed away, the Barbary pirates from North Africa attacked Ireland. There was no defense. They arrived in the port of Baltimore, ransacked the town, kidnapped over 100 people, took the hostages back to North Africa, and only three of them were ever said to have returned to Ireland. There were no defences in place. It's a pity Grace O'Malley wasn't around. At least she could have protected us, perhaps. Ireland has always associated, has always associated the sea with perhaps a little bit of sadness. Emigration, where hundreds of thousands of people boarded ships like the Jeannie Johnson and made their way to new lands like North America, Australia, New Zealand, and other places. So there's always this vision of families on the key wall saying goodbye to their loved ones, never to be seen again. So that's something we associate with the maritime sphere also. It's all not all bad news. Mr. Holland there behind me invented the submarine in County Clare. He was turned down by a number of people and eventually the United States Navy took on board his ideas and he invented the submarine and we know the rest is history. So we had innovation and invention despite the attitude that prevailed in the country at the time to which a to a certain extent still prevails today. We all know about Titanic. This is the wonderful Titanic Convention Center in Belfast which commemorates the tragedy 100 years ago where over 1,500 souls lost their lives. Titanic was built in Belfast, and her last port of call was Queenstown. But since Titanic uh, sank, there have been many changes, and there has been an increase in awareness, fortunately. Right up to the modern day, when just a few months ago, the round-the-world sailing race arrived in Galway, 
and for two fantastic weeks, they had a great party up there. Millions of people, uh, uh, millions of euro uh, poured into the local economy. Thousands and thousands of people came to enjoy Damien Foxall's wonderful achievement of being on the winning boat. Two fantastic weeks, lots of money spent, and after the two weeks, well, the boat sailed away and everybody else went back to the farm. Maybe. Let's look at our fisheries. Our fisheries has a catch of about 247,000 tons each year, most of which is exported. That is worth 264 million to our economy. An awful lot of money. Do we realize that? There are many foreign vessels in our territorial waters. They're allowed to be there. We have only got a small fishing fleet, but nevertheless, it is effective. The fishery is protected by the Irish Navy, which do a fantastic job, because the two vessels you see there make up 25% of the entire Irish Naval Service. They're patrolling our waters, protecting the fishery, making sure there isn't overfishing, and making sure that fishing vessels stay within the defined limits. What about the maritime industry itself? 99% of all of our imports and exports travel by sea. Who would have believed that? The cars you drove here in, the clothes you're wearing, the fuel in your car, the screens, the microphones, everything comes and goes by sea. What we produce, the computers we make, the, the, the food we produce goes out by sea. It is an absolutely important part of our transport chain, the maritime sphere. Looking there, some local companies, a few companies in Ireland, the vast majority of crews on those ships are from other countries. They don't live in this country. The shipping industry itself is very complex. It's about 7,500 people directly employed by the, fishing in, uh, by the shipping industry. And it is very complex, you can see. But nevertheless, it's working away there in the background, making sure that our supplies come and what we produce goes, and this all contributes to the economy. You've got ships, crews, ship owners, ship agents, ship brokers, maritime lawyers, maritime educators, they're all involved in the industries, a little industry there. There's great potential there for our island nation. Let's have a look at the real map of Ireland. This is a map which has been produced by the Marine Institute. If you look at the red line there, that red line delineates the real maritime territorial domain we have. It is 10 times the size of the land itself. Stretching all the way out to the northwest to the Rockall Bank and all the way down to the southwest to the Porcupine Plain. That is a hell of a territory. And when you look at that territory, it is the third largest territory in the European Union. And it is, it is to that area that we have to look, we have to consider, we have to look for opportunities in order to share our maritime future. Well, we've just heard from Bill um, about Ireland's maritime heritage. Um, and in particular, um, the question has been asked, um, why are we a nation of farmers? Why aren't we a nation of seafarers? Why have we missed this opportunity for the development of Ireland's maritime economy? Many theories exist um, that can put this into context. Um, in particular, for example, it is considered that the impact of famine and emigration by sea has been quite profound with respect to the Irish psyche. But I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I'm not going to explore anything further with respect to our maritime past. I want to focus on our future. And I'm going to put it to you that we have endless opportunities with respect to this domain um, of the west, north and south and east coast of Ireland. The opportunities exist in multiple sectors, not just with respect to the traditional sectors of uh, fisheries, aquaculture, shipping or navigation. Let's look at, for example, something a little bit lateral. Let's think about Ireland in the context of maritime security. 
Why is uh, maritime security an area of opportunity for Ireland? Well, look, look at it like this. Bill has described the whole issue of piracy, and he's talked about uh, the impact of infamous figures such as Grainne Whale and our maritime heritage. But piracy is very much a modern day phenomenon. If you consider um, the impact of Somali pirates hijacking an oil tanker off the Horn of Africa with a cargo of oil on board worth over a hundred million dollars, then that's clearly something that we need to be concerned about. But why worry um, about the, the Horn of Africa when you're looking to be concerned about, for example, the coast of Connemara? Well, Bill has explained that the shipping industry is quite global, and that figure of 99% of our goods um, imported and exported by sea means that Ireland is potentially threatened economically with respect to these global issues. But let's turn it around. Um, let's look at the opportunity here. The maritime security market is worth over 15 billion US dollars a year, and it is a rapidly growing sector. My proposal is that Ireland has a huge opportunity to get involved in sectors such as this. I'll give you two reasons. We have an international track record with regards to ICT. There's a massive opportunity to harness ICT expertise and to focus it on issues, for example, around maritime surveillance. Getting ICT experts, for example, to look at data integration of data coming from satellites, ships, autonomous vehicles, and developing a more enhanced, recognised maritime picture for Ireland and for other parts of the world. The second point is that we actually have access to an immense abundance of expertise with respect to the Ireland's maritime domain from our national agencies, such as the Irish Naval Service, for example. It is the Naval Service's vision to focus on the economic deficit as a principal enemy of the state. And for a naval service, that's quite new and that's quite radical. As a result of that, the Navy, with all of their maritime domain knowledge, are positioning themselves to support companies, enterprise and innovation. And I put it to you that that's the kind of activity that we should seek to enhance um, and to develop with respect to um, creativity amongst our public sector organisations. And it's that type of ethos that can help us to grow into different types of maritime sectors and to develop an ocean economy. A second um, major opportunity for Ireland, and something um, I would hope you're maybe a little bit more familiar with, um, because it's gaining a lot of traction in the last couple of years, is the opportunity to harness our marine renewable energy. When we talk about marine renewables, we're talking about wind, wave, and tidal. The offshore wind sector is very well developed in Europe, and in fact, it is expanding very significantly at this point in time even further. The leading country globally with regards to offshore wind is Denmark. But at the beginning um, of that sector, Ireland was considered to be a potential global leader. Unfortunately, we missed the boat with regards to offshore wind, uh, but that doesn't mean that there aren't opportunities for us now. The next generation of um, offshore wind will be about deploying turbines in deeper waters, for example, in the Atlantic Ocean, and um, developing um, technologies around things like floating platforms. So we have tremendous natural resources that we can exploit with regards to marine renewable energy. Tidal and wave energy in particular are major opportunities for us. We can potentially create up to 52,000 jobs from tidal and wave energy in this country by 2030 according to a report that was produced by the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. We have the best wave energy regime in the world off the west coast of Ireland. We have access to hungry markets such as the UK on our doorstep. Eight out of the top ten ocean energy device development companies are located in Ireland. And we have a phenomenal academic track record in facilitating um, the testing of devices at the laboratory scale. In fact, we're currently developing in Cork what will become the world's largest marine renewable energy research facility to enable the, 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 ad the advancement and acceleration of this sector. So potentially, ocean energy can be to Ireland what oil is to Saudi Arabia. 
if we look at shipping and transport, a very, very well developed section, uh, sector worldwide, how can Ireland perform here? We need to be able to identify niche markets for ourselves um, so that we can actually set ourselves apart. And I propose that niche markets exist in places such as maritime training. We have the advantage competitively of English language. We have some of the best maritime training facilities in the world here in Cork. And also, Ireland is extremely attractive as a location for overseas students. We need to take advantage of those um, key factors and to really push the boundaries with regards to um, developing these sectors into the future. And marine recreation may be something that we're a little bit more familiar with. Um, I would put it to you that this is a whole sector of unfulfilled potential. Just look at the west coast of Ireland and the huge lack of uh, marinas um, along the west coast um, for an area that is so beautiful and has so much potential with respect to uh, a cruising ground, uh, sailing ground and so on. We can't afford to leave these sectors unexplored and unexploited. So just there, you've seen a snapshot of, of four different sectors where I believe um, there are opportunities for Ireland. Let's just think about this from the point of view of this TED Talk. If I was coming back and if I was being asked to do this TED Talk in 2030, I'd like to think that I wouldn't be discussing here um, the fact that Ireland is an island nation that has turned its back to the sea. I'd much rather be explaining to you how at the beginning of this millennium, we actually managed to transform that relationship to create a scenario where we now have a thriving ocean economy for this country. We're moving in the right direction. Um, I'm glad to say that for the first time since the foundation of the state, um, we now have a roadmap. The Integrated Marine Plan for Ireland was published in July. We have a long way to go, but I think we've turned a corner. Um, and I suppose the next chapter of our maritime heritage has been written. And if you ask me, it's going to be a positive one. Thank you.